crack filament, clog nozzles, broken extruders, wasted filament, wasted prints. We all know you're supposed to keep your filament dry, but what is really dry? We have recommendations from the EPA. We have recommendations from our filament manufacturers. Today, we're gonna go into it and see what's realistic, what's the gold standard, and what you can do in your own home or lab. We're gonna also review the Sunlu Filler Dryer SP2. It's not out yet, and they actually sent out just 20 of these units for people to try out. I was lucky enough to get one of them. So I'm gonna unbox this and get to the bottom of drying right after this. Welcome to the show that sets your mind free. Tech and gadgets, 3D surprise. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Captain Creativity. I am your host, David Merrill, and we're gonna talk about drying filament today and keeping it dry and what's realistic, what's not, and unboxing the Sunlu Filler Dryer SP2 that's coming out this month, actually on May 19th. Well, before we get into the unboxing, I wanna get right to it. So when it comes to the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, they're gonna tell you that the ideal living conditions are going to be between 30 and 50%. Anything higher, you start risking things like mold, and anything lower than that, you end up with things like skin irritations, respiratory issues, and I have to tell you, if you have contacts, your eyes could get really dry and it just becomes really, really uncomfortable. What's good for humans is unfortunately not so great for filament. PLA is much more forgiving than PETG, but they tend to want to be below, you know, basically around 30 percent humidity. Pet G might be a little bit lower than that, but essentially you want to be operating at around 30 percent humidity. Storage is ideal at like around 20 percent humidity, so when you put things in dryer boxes, that's really what you're aiming for. You really want to try to get it down to that level. But once you start creeping up, that's when you can start risking all kinds of popping and bubbling and moisture comes in and that just destroys your prints. You know, so many of you who end up with clogs, many times don't even realize that they're typically caused because of dry filament. For example, something like the Bamboo Lab A1 with the AMS, it's really popular and a lot of kids put their rolls on there and teachers do the same thing and you keep your rolls on there and then you just set it and forget it, right? But I'm gonna tell you something, after about four to five days, they snap and they crack off and it's a nightmare. Especially for people who are just beginning, they get clogged and they get stuck inside the mechanism and then you have to kind of snake it out with another piece of filament or in some cases when it gets into a clogged nozzle, it's a whole other process. And we're not gonna go through that today on how to fix it. We could do that on another time or you could check out a ton of videos that do discuss it. But what is realistic? What is the happy medium? My opinion is, you really want to try to be somewhere in the 40% humidity range. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, no, nah, I heard 30%. Well, here's the thing. 30%, it could get really, really dry. If you feel like you can handle it, go for 30%. Certainly, your filament's gonna love you for it. But if you're trying to get a comfortable environment where your filament will eventually not like it over long periods of time, try to be somewhere between 35 and 40%. If you could stay between those numbers, that's great. So in order to monitor your environment, you could get a hydrometer for the classroom, for your maker lab. And if you have a very damp or a very humid environment, maybe think about getting a dehumidifier. When you do want to print and you don't have something like an AMS or something that actually holds the filament or you just want to store your filament, then I highly recommend getting dryer. Now, let's be realistic. If you're a teacher, you're probably going to just leave it there and that's fine. But you have to understand that some filament get way more brittle than others. So from my experience, at least with PLA, I've been able to get great results with keeping my 
printer is running at least every three days. If you extend it longer than that, well, then you're gonna get trouble. So anyway, without do, let's jump into this. I was really honored to get one of these. They actually told me they only had 20 of them and they chose me. That's pretty awesome. So let's take a look what we got. So here it is, not bad. A couple of things they wanted me to be aware about this unit, I'll go through them right now. Basically, they say this is a modular split design, which means that the heating base and the chamber could be separated. I guess we'll see that in just a moment. It also sports a large capacity. It actually says it can hold one three kilogram roll of filament or two regular rolls of one kilogram filament or just one roll of one kilogram filament. There is a bunch of seals, silicon seals over here on both sides, actually one, two, three, and then also on this side, one, two, three. All right, so let's open this up. So we're gonna slide that to open, slide that to open. There's a handle on the top. Ooh, yeah, that is, that is solid. You could actually, that's a, they have a gasket all around the perimeter here. So let's put that to the side for the time being. Ah, okay, so this must be the base that they're talking about. All right, so anyway, here's the base over here. LCD is gonna be in the front. And then you can see over here, one, two, three, four, vents to heat the chamber. All right, so let's see what we got over here. We have a proclamation. <laughs> oh, okay. They're just basically saying that this is one of the first 20 units that they have and that it's still in the trial stage and to basically note that there might be some imperfections and, you know, any feedback is essential. And thank you for refining this product and helping us provide a better user experience to our customers. Very nice. Okay, cool. So just a reminder, May 19th is when the pre-sale begins and then it will end on June 19th of 2025. I'm gonna talk about pricing in just a minute. Let's dive in further. So we have some ball bearings and rod. Oh, and the hydrometer right over there. Oh, look, so I was about to say, I was like, whoa, 20%? I was like, no, that's not possible. And then I was like, oh, it's sitting right next to a desiccant packet. <laughs> I was like, I got excited there for a second. I was like, whoa. I didn't know my lab was so dry. <laughs> so one thing that's really kind of cool about this concept of having a split design, and I didn't really fully grasp it at first, but now I'm totally getting it. You don't need a heater for every single dryer box. And I think that that's what the guys at Sunlu said, is like, it's not really necessary to put all of that stuff into every dryer box. You would imagine that you might just want to buy a couple of these and just one of these. And if you think about it, that makes total sense because let's take a look. So when I need to go ahead and dry something out, you know, I'll put on the top, right? Close it up, put it on the heater. And then as soon as I'm done drying it out after about four to six hours, I take it off. And then if I wanna put it in storage, all I'm gonna do is take these covers, pop them on like that. And that's it. It's ready for storage and you put them to the side. I don't know what the price of these are gonna be separately. And I really hope that they, I, I hope that they are doing what I'm thinking that they're gonna do here. Because if you buy these separately for a much cheaper price, then that actually makes a lot more sense. And then you could get a bunch of these and then just have only one of these for when you're actually drying. That's pretty cool. I like that idea. Okay, so for the next step, we gotta go ahead and install these little rods with these ball bearings. And it's really quite simple. You just kind of put one on here, one on there, and then you just have to place them inside. See? And you just do that four more times. All right, so there you go. All four rods are installed. Okay, so now it's time to install the desiccant material inside the hygrometer. Basically, you're gonna just pop off the lid. At least that's what it tells me to. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> All right, we popped off the lid. And now we're going to empty 
the desiccant packets. Right, so once they're in, the desiccant packets are in there and you're good to go. Now, one thing I'm definitely gonna say about this because I've seen people raise this concern in the past, I'm not thrilled with the idea that the hygrometer has the, and definitely tell me in the comments if I'm wrong on this, but if you're putting the desiccant around the hygrometer, aren't you then just getting a false reading because you're not really getting the environment. You're really, I, I mean, I, I feel like you're almost getting a false sense of a reading because it's like the desiccant is right around it. So you're, you're, you're doing an amazing job of drying around this area, but you're really not getting the true measurement of something that's maybe six inches away or 12 inches away. All right, nonetheless, we're gonna install it right over here. And it just goes in just like that. See? The last thing that we have to install is the bar. And this is what the spool of filament is gonna go on. So this is meant to come on and off. And what you're gonna do is you take that and you place it right in the slot over here. All right, so let's go ahead, put our filament in. Okay, there we go. And so here you could see, I have uh, two different types of filament here and they're just gonna sit there. And basically once I turn on the dryer, they're gonna start drying out that filament. All right, so now it's time to fire this thing up. Let's turn it on. I read through the documentation. Usually according to this dryer and most dryers, usually you need about four to six hours of drying time unless it's PA or PC and then, then I think it's a couple hours further. Okay, so now let's talk about pricing and availability. This is gonna go on pre-sale on May 19th at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and it's gonna run till about June 19th. Now the first 100 units in the pre-sale, this is gonna go for about $89.99. And then I was pleased to find out that you can buy the chamber separately and it will come with two rolls of PLA plus, and that's gonna run you about $69.99. So that's pretty cool because if you look at a roll for, I don't know, maybe maximum 20 bucks, right? Then the chamber really comes out to something like $30 during the pre-sale event. That's pretty good. Now, after after the first 100 units, this is gonna go to $99.99. And then after that, the chamber and the two rolls of filament is gonna jump up to $74.99. So just an extra $5. So after the sale is over, this is gonna actually run about $109.99. And if you wanna buy a chamber, which will still come with two rolls of filament, uh, that's gonna run about $79.99. All right, so now let's go fire it up. We have our pet G put in there and here we go. So if you take a look, um, we're gonna go ahead and press the power button right over there. And all right, so it's right now set to pet G. So if I didn't have it already on pet G, I could change it to set and you go over till it starts blinking. So we're gonna go to, there we go. Now it's blinking, the, the material type is blinking. And we're gonna go up, so there's TPU, ABS, PA, PC, PLA, and PETG. And you could just leave it on there. If you wanna go ahead, you can manually control the time, the temperature, etc. But like I said, you leave it for about four to six hours. According to the manual, you should be all good to go. And that's true also for PLA, four to six hours. In fact, the only thing that's not gonna take more than four to six hours is going to be PA or PC. That's gonna run about 10 to 12 hours. But basically PLA, PETG, TPU, that's gonna need about 50 to 55 degrees Celsius. Once you get to PVA, ASA, AABS, it's also four to six hours, but the temperature needs to be 65 to 70 degrees Celsius. And then when you get to PA or EC, it's also 65 to 70 degrees Celsius, but 10 to 12 hours. All right, so at the end of the day, what do I think about this? Well, I have to say the price point I feel is just right. I love the fact that you could buy the chamber separately. And I think that's going to be very welcomed in a setting where 
you just really want to buy one heater and then these are just going to be storage containers or units that you can open up these little silicon seals and send the filament through to your printer. So the price is right. Even whether it's pre-sale or post-sale, the price is still good in my opinion because when I compare it to buying those big containers at Target or other stores and then punching holes and putting this whole thing together. I think I'd just rather buy one of these. And like I said, it does come with the two rolls of filament. So it brings down the price point for the chamber to something that in my opinion, I think is reasonable. Now, here's the good news. I actually reached out to Sun Lu about everything that's going on with tariffs and all this and that. And as we know, prices are just shooting up. And I mean, is it even related to tariffs or, I'm not gonna get into that. I just know that prices are going up. I'm not happy about it. I think that sucks. But I asked Sun Lu and they told me that they're not increasing their prices, that the prices that we're, we're gonna see are going to stay. Okay, so let's talk about the pros, the cons, and who this is meant for. Well, for the pros, I love what Sun Lu did with the split system. I think it's refreshing and it just makes sense. You know, when you buy a dryer box, not every one of them that you buy should have a heater in it. You don't need it. I love the fact that when you get this, you can buy a bunch of these chambers separately and at a cheaper price because I really only need about one of these for my lab and then a bunch of these for storage or to hook them up to the printers. I did a cost analysis on this, comparing that to a DIY project of buying one of those containers from Target and going through that whole DIY dry box solution with silicone inserts and all that. And at the end of the day, I just found that this just made more economical sense for me. But you tell me, Break it down. Remember that you get two rolls of filament and after the sale is over, this is gonna come out to about $40 and it does come with the hydrometer as well. So does that make more sense? Well, let me know, comments below. But let's talk about the con. The only con that I really had, again, is the hydrometer. Um, I, it's not that it doesn't work. It does a good job and it actually does dry the chamber. It's fine. It's the reading because I do believe that when you concentrate all the desiccant around the sensor, you're not really getting a true reading of the humidity because I just don't think it's getting what the real humidity is in the center or on the far end of the chamber. Again, you know, no sensor is gonna be perfect, but I just don't think it's a great idea to put that desiccant around the sensor. But you tell me in the comments below, do you think I'm right? Am I overreacting? Maybe I am, but I love to hear your opinion on it. And that's basically all I have for the cons. It was really just that hydrometer issue. Now who it's meant for, honestly, because of the price point and the fact that they have this modular system and you could just load up, buy a bunch of these for storage. I think this is great for schools. I think it's great for businesses. And I think it's great for individual hobbyists. Now, before we go today, I do wanna say that the dryer space is definitely crowded and there's a lot of different options out there. Things to be on the lookout for is finally there are some dryers out there that are putting in different chambers so that you can dry two different types of material like TPU separate from PLA. That is coming out and there's a couple of companies that are doing it, Creality was one, and we have a dryer solution that's coming up in a future review, so stay tuned. And that's all we have for today, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Yes, apparently ringing that bell is really good because it lets you know when we have a new video. Ha, 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 ha.